Hey, it's Courtney from Courtney Covers Cleveland, and today I'm sitting with Stan Jackson, the trusted source for all things law in Cleveland. Stan, tell everybody hello, and let's talk a little bit about you today. Hey, Courtney. Good to see you. Glad Good to, to be here. Too. All right. Glad to be here. Um, it's important for me to sit down and talk to you because what I've noticed is that we don't know what we don't know, especially when it comes to law. And you know I love supporting small black businesses, black law firms, black everything in Cleveland and promoting them. And it was important for me to sit down and talk about some things that are happening in Cleveland. So let's just jump right in. Let's go. Okay. So let's talk about Cleveland. You're born and raised here, went to St. Ignatius, went to college at Dayton. No, I went to Bowling Green for undergrad, grad school, and then went to University of Dayton for law school. Okay, and then you came back to Cleveland. Why did you come back to Cleveland? Uh, it was just a natural thing that I needed to do. You know, as a young kid in Cleveland, I knew that I wanted to be a, a servant for the community, and I knew that after acquiring my law degree that it was a must for me to come back to help our community. Mm. Okay. But why, but why, what made you want to become a lawyer? Why was that the avenue? It was the back to the community. I'm sorry. It was the avenue because, you know, as a kid, I was always an advocate for other kids. Okay. And it was a natural progression. When I got to undergrad, I realized that I was really good at writing. I knew that I had a passion to help, and I knew that the law was a way to do it. And so I realized that I needed to take my skills and use them in a way that would be uh, most effective in being a leader in our community. And it was law was a natural progression. So I used that as an opportunity after I graduated to join a law firm and come back to Cleveland. Okay. I love to see people come back. I think that's the best part about people going abroad or going to school somewhere else, is that you learn what you learn to come back and bring those talents to Cleveland. So, thank you. Um, what's the biggest misconception about lawyers? Are you stuffy? Are you fun? What do you think people think about lawyers that's actually not true? Well, I think people don't realize that we actually, at some point, have to have a downtime where we do something fun, and that we actually don't have fun, but we actually do. Okay, so what do you do for fun? Uh, well, I'm a private pilot, so I fly planes, a little risky, yeah. but I, you know, I've never had an accident. And did you just wake up one day like, I want to learn how to fly planes? What, is, what does that even look like? No, uh, as a kid, I had a fear of heights, so I took it as an opportunity in undergrad to get my pilot's license, so I used it as an opportunity to, you know, achieve a goal that I didn't think was possible, and it just gave me the courage to go on and do other things. That's crazy. So how, what, how long is pilot school? What does that even look like? So it's about a year. You have to take, you know, a test, um, a written test. You kind of learn in the classroom, and then they have you do some solos. Solos are where you, you know, fly by yourself for, you know, 30 or 40 minutes, and then come back. And you know, at Bowling, that's what I did at Bowling Green. Bowling Green has an airport right behind the campus, and they have an aviation department. And since I was there, and school was free, the aviation school was free. Nice. So, what's your favorite place to fly to? Ironically, Pittsburgh, out of all places. Really? So do you? So do you just say like I'm going to Burke, I'm getting the plane, and I'm driving, and I'm gonna take it? To, does it work like that? Yeah, you go down to Burke, Burke uh, Airport. You walk in. You know, if you have your license, you know, you can rent a plane, or if you own a plane, you know, you may hanger it there. You get in the plane, take it up. You know, you have your plan on your iPad, or if you want to chart it manually, you can chart it. You take off and you come back. That's crazy. I never knew it was that easy. I didn't know that you could just like, hey, you know what? I want to fly to Pittsburgh this afternoon. I was going to rent a plane. What does it cost to rent a plane? Uh, it just depends on what type of plane you fly. So you fly a Cessna or a Piper, depending on how large the plane is, the gas. It basically costs the gas, and then there's a rental fee. But depending on the size of the plane, like a car. So if you have a larger plane that sits like 16 people or a smaller plane that sits four people. Okay. Can you learn how to fly in Cleveland? Is that something you can do here? Oh, yeah, of course. You can do that at, at Burke Airport. Okay. Um, they have classes. Uh, there aren't very many African Americans who do it. I'd, I'd love for you know young people to get involved. I mean, you can get your license as early as 15 years old. Sure. 15 okay, or so 14. not only are you the go-to resource for law, but also in case someone's interested in becoming a pilot. They yes. can at least reach out to you to get an idea, or you can point them in the right direction. Correct. That's a big deal because people don't know what exists in Cleveland. I would have never known that. I would have thought you had to go to another city to learn how to fly a plane. So that's kind of cool. So now that we know that you're a pilot, let's talk about you as a lawyer. Um, tell me a little bit about your law firm. My law firm, the Cochran Law Firm, was started many years ago by the great Johnny L. Cochran, our founding father. We have 28 offices throughout the country and over 300 attorneys. Johnny Cochran? Johnny Cochran. 
Okay, so I've known about the Cocker Law Firm. I never put two two together <laughs> that it was Johnny Cocker's law firm. Yes. That that's crazy because I'm really I know we're on film and you guys are watching this, but I really never knew that until this moment. I knew like Cochran, I thought it was your last name, even though I know your last name is Jackson. Now it's all coming full circle. Yeah. Okay, so that's a big deal. It is. Uh, we're proud. You know, one of the things that our founding father said is that we have to be prepared to provide service and excellence in our community. Yeah. And one of the main uh, mantras that uh, Johnny L. Cochran, you know, was about was preparation, preparation, preparation. And so what you're going to get from Cochran lawyers is that we're going to be prepared. Okay. We're going to be relentless and we're going to do uh, an excellent job to make sure we get a result for our community. So I'm still amazed. So how many law firms do you have in the country? Because there's one in Cleveland, but this is nationwide in different right. cities. So there's 28 uh, offices throughout the country. We're in okay. almost every state. Some states were, uh, you know, multiple cities. Okay. So most of your major states we're in. Okay. So you guys won the Civil Rights Law Firm of the Year. That's a huge deal. But what does that mean? What did you do? What did you do right to win that? We did what... That's heavy. We, I appreciate it. We, we did what we are supposed to do. We were um, vigilant. We were relentless. And any time that, you know, people in our community were, their rights were um, afflicted or whatever, we were there. And so um, most of your cases throughout the country that you see um, with police brutality and things of that nature, we're on the front lines. Okay. And so this is well, be well before the, the Floyd case. We were already there. And so we were consistent, and once again, like I said, we were relentless in what we do, and we happened to, you know, turn out to be the only choice, yeah. which was the Cochran Firm, the Civil Rights Law Firm of the Year. Okay, well, that is an honor. Congratulations. But as you said, civil rights law, what are some other examples besides police brutality that somebody might have a civil rights law firm? Just like some examples that we could throw out during. So somebody might say, hey, this might be a lawsuit. Well, I mean, any time that your rights are, you know, your inalienable rights are discriminated against, I mean, you have discrimination cases. So it may not necessarily be a police brutality case, but it could be a discrimination case. And like if I walk in Saks and nobody speaks to me, that's not, that's not it. No, that's, okay, that's, right, that's okay. that doesn't rise to it. I'm just clarity. I'm just <laughs> trying to get some directions so people know. Right. If you go into, well, if you and others that are similarly situated black females constantly go into Saks and you're mistreated in a way, you're also profiled, you're also asked to, to go to one side of the store, okay. you can only shop in certain sections. Okay. Then after a group of people, after a period of time, when there's a pattern, then there's a particular case. Then you want to call the Cochran firm. We're going to right. do the research. So it's a little deeper than just the surface. They didn't speak to me, and I have a lawsuit on my hands. Right, okay. but that's probably evidence for things that have been happening. Okay, okay. So not only do you do civil rights law, what else do you practice? Well, we're also exceptional in auto and trucking accidents, premise liability, and medical malpractice. Okay. And which one is most important in Cleveland? In Cleveland? Statistically. Statistically, auto and trucking accidents. You know, okay. Cleveland is one of those areas where, um, because we have a lot of urban area, we have a, a freeway that, you know, travels directly through our city that allows individuals from the East Coast to travel to the West Coast, to the Midwest. We get a lot of traffic, people traveling from Southern, uh, Southern America coming up through, you know, 71, going through, trying to get to the eastern border of the country. We're just a complete thoroughway. So you're going to have a lot of trucking accidents, especially in the winter when there's time and there's, there's uh, you know, very unagreeable weather. Uh, you're going to have a lot of accidents in Ohio. Northeast Ohio seems to be, unfortunately, a, uh, a haven for those type of accidents. So we're here to provide that service. Now, is it heavier in, like, the winter months because the trucks are not out salting, or is it just period, all year round, Cleveland is an issue for auto accidents? You know, actually, period, it's all year round. I mean, round. the reality is, is that in the winter you have more disagreeable weather, so right. there's more of an opportunity for that accident to happen. Um, but then in the summer you have more trucks that are running. You have more activity. So it equals out when you, when you do the math between the two because now you have – greater weather, you have better weather, but more traffic, right. but then you have less traffic, but more. More partying downtown, everybody's <laughs> out, driving around, everything's open at 2 a.m. Yes, I mean, it totally makes bad sense. conditions. Yeah, okay. Okay, so tell me this, and I've always wondered this. Okay. What is the first thing you do when you get in an accident? Like, I'm always like, and I've been in a few accidents, 
Do you get out and take pictures? Am I supposed to call the police? Do I call a lawyer? What is the proper protocol from a lawyer when you get in an accident? What are you supposed to do? Um, the is there a right way? Uh, yes and no. The, okay. the first thing you do is make sure you're safe, right? Okay. You're in an accident, make sure you, your occupants are safe. The second thing you do is you make sure you call for assistance, right? So you're gonna make that 911 call, you're gonna make a call, you know, if you've got a family member or something like that, that's also gonna be an assistance to help you. You call them, let them know where you're located. And then the next thing you do is obviously you call the law firm, right? Okay. Um, 216-333-3333, you call the Cochran firm. So that we can- Say it one more time. 216-333-3333. Okay, easy to remember. So once you do that, uh, you know, the next step, you know, I, I know I mentioned three, but you also have to, when you know, when you go to the hospital, you have to follow up on whatever they prescribe you, whatever care that you're supposed mm -hmm. to have. That's okay. the number one thing that people do wrong in an auto accident, that they don't follow up. Hey, I've got a neck or a back injury. My neck or back hurt. The first question we ask is, who is your primary care physician? Who is your treating physician? Who's going to be treating you? And you hear, oh, well, I've got to work. I can't make it. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that happen that, yeah. that doesn't help your case. The thing that helps your case is going to get treated to get better, okay. no matter how long that takes. Okay. So as soon as you get an accident, make sure you go to the doctor. Yes. Make sure you go to the doctor. Find out what's wrong and get it documented. Get it documented and then follow the plan. Okay. Do what they say. Do what they say. That's easy, right? That's you have a hard time doing what they say, but that's all you have to do. Okay. Okay, so what else do you do? Um, premise liability. So premise liability is, um, you know, whenever you go to a, a building or a facility, you have a right to safety. Okay. And so whoever owns, whoever owns that building, they're supposed to make sure that that building is safe and secure. And so premise liability is that the landlord or the owner of that building, if you're injured while you're there because of lack of care or lack of security, then you have a claim against that building. So, right. Like slip on the ice? They didn't put salt down? I keep talking about salt because winter is coming, <laughs> y'all. Um, or like you mentioned earlier, the lock is not working and then somebody came in. Or is it all inclusive? It's just whatever safety looks like. It's, it's safety, but here's a good example. Um, there was a concert, I'm sure you heard about, there was a concert oh, yes. out in Texas. Mm -hmm. That's a premise liability case. Okay. That's a key premise liability case. You went there with the expectation that you were gonna be safe, you wanted to enjoy yourself. They knew that they didn't have enough security okay. for the amount of people that were coming. And the previous situations before, previous concerts before, they knew that there were other incidents. So it was only a matter of time before this happened. So that is a prime so is example. That the venue li is the venue liable? Because I see the lawsuits going to um, him and Drake now. But is that is it, are they at fault or is the venue at fault for not having a secure venue? Typical lawyer answer, everyone's at fault because everyone, everyone has a responsibility. Okay. okay. You have the, you know, you're gonna get the benefit from it, but you also have the responsibility of making sure because you're the one who you know, if you're the artist or if you're the record label or if you're, you know, the facility that's holding it, you guys all came together to invite people to come out. Okay. So this is great, right? Because this is a realistic question as an event planner or as a person who hosts events at their house, right? Mm -hmm. You often hear, oh, not on my watch or you can't drink that much and then leave so you can come back and sue me. Is that the same situation? Because even with the holidays coming up and New Year's, if I have a group of people at my house and we're drinking and somebody decides to leave, can I then be held liable? I've heard about adults and their kids having friends over and doing things that are bad and then they can ultimately sue another parent. Is any of that accurate or what does that look like? Because that's real life. It is, but it's not considered premise liability. Not, okay. So there's a, that's a different type of liability. Okay. Um, but yes, you do have that responsibility. Who knew? Who knew? Okay. Right, right. But you do have that responsibility. When okay. people come over, you know, you want to make sure they're safe. But that's why you have homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance, oh. which covers you in those incidents. Oh, see? You learn something new every day. Yeah. Everybody needs a stand. Everybody needs a stand. <laughs> okay, so is there anything else you want us to know about being a lawyer, being a law firm, having a law firm in Cleveland? What do you want people that are watching this to know? I want everyone to know that the Cochran Firm is here because we love Cleveland. 
we want to make sure that everyone has the right to fair, um, zealous, relentless representation. We want to make sure that um, everyone, you know, their needs are being met when it comes to representation. We want to make sure that our city is safe and safe in different regards. Safe as far as premises are concerned, safe as far as uh, police brutality issues cases, things of that nature, safe as far as auto trucking accidents, right? So the reason that lawyers exist is because we are the ones who go against the big companies and do the things that most others won't do. And when we do that, those companies then have to have safeguards in place. So if lawyers aren't suing, you don't have certain uh, twist caps on prescription bottles so that kids don't eat them. Or you don't have certain safety labels on guns when you go into Walmart because kids are playing with guns and officers are shooting kids or something like that, like a Tamir Rice situation. Then you have, you know, of course, medical malpractice. So if you don't have those type of lawsuits, you don't have the precautions that go into place that save lives. So that's what we're here for, to make Cleveland safer, make Cleveland, you know, to continue to be the beautiful place that it is and be the leading city in the Midwest. Yeah. Well, let me thank you because not only is it an honor to sit with you, but like I said, I love people who go acquire these talents and bring them back and actually work in the community and are here to help Cleveland and are reflective of our community, right? Like I'm sure there's tons of other color lawyers in Cleveland, but I think even in the police force and everything else, it's important to have black people in this industry that look like us, that we can relate to, that can you know understand where we're coming from and really understand the situations because it really is different, you right? It is different, but I also want you to understand this. One thing about the Cochran firm, we have 35 billion in results and settlements wow. in the country. And so the reason we're the leading, not only are we the leading civil rights law firm, we're the leading auto and trucking law firm of the year this past year. Wow. And that's because of the work that we did. Kudos and so that's not awards. Cheers to you. Thank you, but that's not just black. And they're in Cleveland. That's everybody. Okay. So we're excellent at what we do, whether we're black or not. Okay. But the most important part is that we're exceptional yes. and we're here to serve. Not just for, for everybody. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. I did. You know, I'm very passionate about um, at, with the world being what it is yes. and having a black son and having a son that way at college and knowing that there are people here that support them and will, you know, stand up for them and give them the right advice and tell them what to do. Like, I want my sons to have relationships with lawyers, not because something is bound to happen, but just so that they know the right and wrong things to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, we didn't talk about that, but I do wonder, can I ask you one more question? Sure. What are you supposed to do when you get pulled over? Like, is it okay to refuse your license? Should you have your license? Should you answer the questions? And I know, just quick, because we're, you know, this is getting long. No, that's fine. That's something I think my son should know. And most parents who watch TV shows and, you know, you hear about the Miranda rights. But what should you be telling your child to do if they get pulled over or stopped by the police? The first thing they should do is comply. Pull over. Let's say when the lights come on, pull over immediately right? Take your hands, put both your hands out the window so that they don't have a reason to think that you're making any movement that may uh, cause them to fear for their life or that you may be reaching for a weapon. Keep your hands out the window and as they pull up and as they walk up to you, you then, if they add, once they give you a command, you follow that command. If they say, hey, pull out your license, hey, get your registration, you, are, you let them know I'm reaching for my registration. When you do it, you leave the other hand out the window, right? Okay. And you take the hand that, they're, that you're going to use, and you reach over to grab whatever information that they're asking you, if it, whether it's the registration that's in the glove compartment, mm -hmm. reach for it. Make sure you continue to communicate with that officer, be as polite, no matter how rude they're going to be. And the reason being is because whatever they do to you, we want you to make it home first, right? And when you get home, then we can deal with them. But we want you to comply. If they, you know, they may ask you a question, they may try to get you to do something that you may feel is not right and uncomfortable, comply. Because yeah, that... Comply, comply, comply. Comply. Just That's comply. the number one thing. Don't argue your case on the side of the road. Don't try to resist because you believe what they're doing is wrong. But verbalize it. Verbalize if they're doing something wrong to you. Hey, I don't feel comfortable, but comply. I mean, that's heavy, right? That's important to me to notice. And I think I can Google as much as I want, but it feel, I feel better knowing that it's coming from a trusted source, right? right? That you're giving me the best advice that I can tell my son if this ever happens. Watch this video. Let me tell you what Stan said, right? Because they are getting older and they're getting bigger, and this is a concern as a mom. So I think that this is something that a lot of followers can resonate with, like having sons or having a husband 
This is what you're supposed to do, right. right? Okay, thank you for that. That was awesome. And like I said, I think you help educate a lot of people, not just about getting pulled over, but the auto accidents and the premise. Liability. Premise liability. And that they have a trusted source right here in Cleveland. And they can always call the Cochran firm, right? Yes, they can. Right. So we're going to repeat that number one more time. 216-333-3333. Yes, and we'll put that at the bottom of the screen. And then now, just for a little bit of fun, if you want to know more about Stan, you can go to CourtneyCoversCleveland.com. He was just our last Courtney Covers Cleveland Spotlight, so you can find out a little more about him there. But we're going to have a little bit of fun for the, to go out. Um, answer the first question that comes to mind, okay? All right. Ready? All right. Okay. Favorite place in Cleveland for breakfast? The Breakfast Club. Shaker Square? Yep. Okay. Uh, east Side or West Side? East side all day. Ooh, okay, East side, I'm with you there. Uh, favorite restaurant? Zanzibar. Zanzibar, okay. Um, downtown or Tremont? Downtown. Downtown? Ooh, why you do that? Okay. Uh, favorite place for wings? Best chicken in the city? Uh. You do eat chicken, right? <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm a, I still need an answer. That's like a good All right, let's Cleveland. see. Okay, chicken, 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 chicken. Do you not eat chicken? No. <laughs> so you do not have an answer. Okay, what's your favorite thing to eat? Well, I mean, I, I like fish. I like seafood. Okay, favorite place in Cleveland for seafood? Um, I don't know. You got an answer. We got the Jeopardy clock going right now. We got the Jeopardy clock. Okay. Out of all places, Marble Room. Oh, okay. All right, I would say Blue Point or Pure W, but I, I'm with you on that. Those are three great options for seafood. Okay, uh, Cavs game or Browns game? Browns game. Ooh, okay. Best Cleveland athlete of all time? Cleveland athlete, professional? Professional. What were you thinking? I kind of want to say LeBron James. Okay. But I think I want to say Jim Brown. Okay, I'll, I'll take both of those. One basketball, one football. What is what is one thing Cleveland is known for? Our tenacity, our willingness to compete, our willingness to, um, our grit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Best thing about Cleveland. I mean, the people here in the city are genuine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We we have a ton of culture. Uh, we band together. You know, Cleveland is the city. Yeah, I'm with that. Well, thank you so much. All right. It was a pleasure sitting with you. And yes, like I said, visit CochranLawFirm.com. This is Stan Jackson of the Cochran Firm Cleveland. To find out more about what I do, get on the website at www.CochranFirmCleveland.com or call 216-333-3333.